adding to Asha's question and what you have mentioned, how do you perceive the role of AI in shaping the mindset of masses, especially in social and political context? Do you see AI as a boon or a bane? And how do you see the role of AI in governance and position of government as a stakeholder in generative AI? Before coming into the campus, I was sitting outside in a coffee shop. I was having coffee. There was a startup guy sitting there, busy with his laptop. He looked at me, I looked at him. Both had time. Uh, I said, what, who are you? He said, sir, I'm some startup guy. He asked me, who are you? I said, I'm, I'm doing politics here. We not 30 minutes, let us discuss. I said, which field you are? And he said, I'm in the people hiring field. I said, it's going okay? He said, no, sir, AI has disrupted everything, sir. Now all resumes are fake, sir. People write all beautiful things and we are taking so much time to... <laughs> So much time to realize what is right and what is wrong. All statement of purpose, very fancy ones they write. It looks so believable, very emotional. And it just happened to me. It just happened to me 30 minutes before outside your campus in the road across in the coffee shop. So 100% it is going to disrupt. It. Massive disruption is on. And let me go one step further. For a country like us, which is just getting into that orbit of high growth. Because your second part of the question is about how the country AI disruption. And we are just warming up to get into that orbit of $10,000 per capita income. We are about $5,000 now. And we have an ambition to reach there. Now I am going to read out the statistics for you. Since you are max guys, I prepared something in my computer and came. And uh, what is India's GDP now? So we are about 3.8 trillion. You are take a little bit million here and there, 3.8 trillion. So China's GDP is about 17.9 trillion today. I hope it is a true figure from China because nobody knows what is the true figure. 17.9 trillion dollar. And uh, the Americans are somewhere around 37.8 trillion dollar today. Americans are at 37.8. I'm getting the acknowledgement from the professor, which means my numbers are right. 3.8, 17, and 37 is the number we are looking. I was just calculating, when I go to IIT campus, these guys are going to make my country, our country, the developed country by 2047, correct? That is our goal. So I was thinking, how will you guys do it? So I did a simple uh, mathematics calculation. If India is growing 13.5% from today, Remember, no country has grown 13.5% for more than two years. If India is growing 13.5% today, for the next 25 years, compounded annual growth rate, CAGR, F30.5, next year 13.5, 13.5. America is growing at 4% from today. 4%, 4%, 25 years. In 2047, we and US are equal. So you have to grow 13.5% every year. Americans have to grow at 4.5% every year. So that 2047, both sit at the same table and say, hello boss, both our economies are same. If we are growing at 13.5% today, for the next 2042 is what? 2024, 18 years? Yeah, 18 years. Next 18 years, you are growing at 13.5%, 18 years, tap, 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 tap. China is growing 4% next 18 years, tap, tap, tap. Then you will say, hello boss, we are equal. Now, look at the challenge. Can you grow at 13.5%? Because 2047, we have kept a target of 37, 38 trillion dollars now. From 3.8, we have to reach 38 trillion. Traditional ways of business is 100% not going to give you 13.5. Max 7 right now. Do well with a good Prime Minister, good policy, 8.5. Country aligns in the political sphere. All state governments wants to be in the business mode and less politics and more governance. All states in India, maybe 9.5. Then more IITs churning out intelligent guys like you. You are not going to US, I am assuming. You all stay in our country <laughs> and, uh, and, and you all stay in our country for the next 25 years. Do everything. 10.5. Correct? And China problem solved. Pakistan problem solved. Everything solved. And uh, uh, there is no nuisance, political nuisance like me. Everybody is sober and everybody is good. 11.5. Correct? We are talking of 13.5. 2047 equal. So now you are talking of artificial intelligence disruption. 3D technology. 
traditional manufacturing practices going for a toss americans are telling no more buying from china next president you have to manufacture in us and you are like hello boss you manufacture in us it will be costly to hell with that manufacture in us if us starts back manufacturing in a big way with my, the elon musk and people of the world if the europe starts manufacturing within them and they don't want to get into this cost arbitrage which china mastered for a long time so you have to understand that is the world you are entering tomorrow morning you are entering into the world the americans are very clear you know for a fact the next presidential elections in us first time in america's history after 1776 the whites are going to be a minority they are going to come down below 50% so the brown skin and people like me slightly more browner or black whatever people call and they are going to go above 50 hispanics and asians and everybody the traditional whites the bible belts the mormons people inside the so called traditional whites they're going below 50 it is scaring them and next president election is going to be defined by this thing of course two 83 year old guys are fighting so you never know one guy is walking unsteadily other guy is like i still have energy left it is going to be the oldest presidential election but it is not going to be defined by who is more fitter among the two you are 83 year old 80 come do a arm wrestling it is not that the american electorate are going to say look i am scared my country i am first time i am going below 50% my manufacturing is not there i am not getting jobs my per capita income is coming down if you look at the groups the hispanics and the asians their per capita income is growing up because they are more hard working maybe i am not hard working but i don't want to work hard their artificial intelligence is entering you start imagine it is reshaping the global politics it is reshaping the way people are voting countries are going far right in europe far right you have seen uh, the current uh, danish prime minister speaking in the parliament have you seen the speech his speech about muslims his speech about immigration did you see my god different level he's speaking that kind of language in a parliament because they are forced to go extreme right and palestine and gaza what the day one the terror attack inside israel how much killing 800 850 close to 1000 people innocent people died people who just want to have a good fun in the evening a party they got killed butchered massacred what is the retaliation from israel today's count 29700 netanyahu's peace plan is he saying give me the whole gaza i want to see what is happening let us have control over just imagine it is completely disrupting people are fearful people are afraid people think the supply chain is going one side probably to our hemisphere and the south is fearing the north is regaining control the north is fearing south is more noisy the global south the north so you are getting into this geopolitical tension which is which was never there maybe 100 years before even world war 2 was not worse than this because there was a, now there is no powerful guy there is zero powerful guy who will put a regulation why should i listen to americans regulation on ai tomorrow of joe biden is saying oh this is america's regulation on ai you all have to follow i am not going to follow i am saying who are you No, no. You say 1950. I was a great superpower. I will say to hell with it. You are no more a super. You are declaring superpower. You are no Pax Britannica. You are not no Pax Americana. For hundred years, one global superpower managing the whole world. Look at America. They want to manage the whole world. You put one one aircraft carrier in South China Sea. You put one closer to the Koreans. You put one in the Middle East. You put a CENTCOM command here. You have a Pacific fleet. You have a Blue Water Navy. everywhere americans felt oh this is my century i am controlling the whole world middle east fellow have to listen to me the koreans have to listen to me the japanese have to listen to me now why will i listen to us if you look at jay shankar ji statement the america is listening to jay shankar ji now he is going to us and talking a language which we never thought in our lives we will hear an indian external affairs minister talking in us like that so the, the point i'm trying to the point i'm trying to tell you is who is going to regulate ai and it is completely cross border and europeans don't have a common agreement on how to regulate some countries over regulation some countries lesser regulation americans have a problem and you can't call the the chiefs of big companies to the congress every time and the congressmen cannot sit and go gruel them it looks good on tv for their constituents you can get some votes that's the american model of democracy look good on c span 
Now, what I'm trying to tell you is, I don't have an answer. That is why I'm giving a long answer to you. <laughs> and, and what I'm trying to tell you is, there is no answer to you. It is going to disrupt. And that is why we need smart guys like you in politics. Because, how many current politi- politicians understand AI? 543 members in the parliament. Yes, they are very good in the traditional politics. Extremely good. This caste, you divide. This caste, you put. And you put a candidate from this caste. And, and you put a... And, and you put a independent candidate from this caste. Sorry, I will look this side. Sorry, my, I'm just going that side. And you put an independent candidate from this caste. He will, will be the vote cutter. And they will win. Now, unfortunately, fortunately for us, and unfortunately for a lot of people, Modi ji is rewriting the political equation. He's saying, oh, development. And he's talking Vikshit Bharat. He's saying five years this and all those things. So, now, the politics have to change. See, people sitting there in Delhi, not understanding technology, AI, deep fake, regulation. Over-regulation is a problem. You never know how to turn on that stove because dosa has to be pukka. And it has to be correct thing. You have to just flip it and put it. Now regulation has to do that, right? You put over a thing, dosa will become black. Lesser it's uncooked, stomach pain. So I would only say, better guys should get into positions of power, guys of integrity like you, guys of intelligence like you, and understand 10 years from now how will it happen, 20 years from now what will shape up, how is the global demography changing, how is the geopolitical tension now. So Google is number one now, 10 years from now who will be number one? And you all know the chip, the AI, what is the AI background, what is the background for AI? Powerful chips drive AI, right? People say AI, AI is not some Buddha or some uh, something sitting somewhere in Norway and say, oh, I am AI here, hello, hi, hi. It is not that. It is some powerful chips manufactured in, in Hong Kong by TSMC, which manufactures 56% of the world's chip. And 60%? Taiwan. Or a company situated in Netherlands which manufactures the machine for that chip. 100 million dollar is one machine. And we are looking at nanometer now sir. NM, we have got it to 3 NM now. The chip design. 3 NM is the latest TSMC. I am really fearful. I am not hearing this conversation inside politics. I want to hear this conversation inside politics. I sit in many rooms. I sit in a lot of rooms. I want to hear this conversation. Oh now now it is locked company in Netherlands, the sole company in the world, which supplies that mission to TSMC, to NVIDIA, it supplies to Samsung. And they have a monopoly for the next many, many years to buy only that mission, which can write 3 nanometer chip now. And you are, you are seeing there is a guy who is having that monopoly outside. And who is going to have that AI monopoly in the next 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And I, I fear that we are going to get loose out. And that is why our government talks Semiconductor, manufacturing, bring it, chips. And I don't see the language of an MLA or MP who doesn't even understand what is happening. Something happening in, in Taiwan is going to have a repercussion in IIT Chennai. So, sorry for the long answer, but, but the short and sweet answer is we need intelligence guys like you with integrity to come into the playing field and don't be a spectator outside. And, and to see, oh, this guys will regulate. 543 guys in parliament will tell me how to run my startup. Let me run my startup like that. No, you have to be there to tell people of your generation, to tell them, hello boss, I am with you. I understand your problem. I am in the political field. Let us try and work out a solution. And we are not here to harm you as a government. And 13.5% growth for 25 years, sir. Is it possible? Unless you disrupt the whole mindset of our country. You need, you got to have highways, you got to have, we have 51 one day, 41 one day bar trains. We have to make it 500. The first bullet trail, 2026, it is going to fly. But we need 15 bullet trails. We have 149 airports, we need 300. We got to find inland waterways movement of goods. You don't disrupt this. I don't think 13.5% is possible. Oh, no, 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 then you might tell me, no, no, sir. Let us do after 2047. Oh, you are in a hurry. Let us grow only at 9%. Why do you want to come to IIT Chennai and raise our heart pressure to say 13.5%, sir, what is this? You yourself said 7%. When a person like Modiji comes, 8.5%. When all governments behave like Modiji, it is 10%. 
when iit guys don't go to america they stay here 11% you yourself said all those things now you are saying 13.5 brother and sister we will become old in 2047 nigerians will come you know what nigeria is doing now to the world they are just warming up they are no more that third world country sitting in africa the democracy is getting stabilized and once schools come colleges come nigeria gets a seat in the united nations table when the un gets reformed how can you say the most populous uh, country of africa i don't give you a seat in the table wait outside how will you say a country of 142 crore people reforms will come india will be a permanent member it's a matter of time it's geopolitics it's geopolitics and reforms have to happen and you cannot have a country of 142 crore to say or a boss you wait outside your time will come after 25 years so, so what i'm trying to say is we are in for a serious disruption politics economics geopolitics the way the supply chain is structured the way indian economy is being currently run so i hope and pray that you guys get into politics now you are like what is that we called you to give lecture on only economics <laughs> only policing only this thing and now now you are calling us so unless the politicians become smarter than the people to whom the governance is applied then there's no way you will progress faster so i hope and pray that we all together will solve the ai challenge now she is wondering no answer you gave me you took 15 minutes you traveled around the globe you went to chip and now you say you don't have an answer should all you follow up question on what vikram added i think we are seeing a lot of amazing gen ai tools coming up like chat gpt and other and all of these are coming from western countries like india hardly has any big tools like two big reasons we lack a right framework and we also lack right talent pool and this will widen the gap of like you know urban versus rural in india so i think that's another area we would like to hear your views whatever ai you are generating producing sits on top of other networks so ai is applied on top of a network ai can be applied on top of a production network you can apply ai in a factory you can apply ai on a consumption network so you know people are consuming something you're distributing something you can apply ai on that so ai sits on top of a network right i'll tell you a very interesting story to demonstrate the power of this thing it's not directly related to ai the united states attacks iraq okay within 25 days it is wiped out the entire iraqi military and then 6 months later something happened and suddenly us soldiers were dying every day and within a 6 month period the us army lost about 1000 armored vehicles so how did a country or a system that couldn't take on the united states at all and failed to take them on suddenly 6 months later literally broke their back what happened saddam hussein came from a tribe called the tikriti tribe this tribe was the center of the iraqi regime when saddam hussein realized that america aa raha hai he told all his tikriti guys bhaiya tum log bhago what did he do he basically took 155 mm shells you know they are artillery shells and he distributed them to all these guys and he said gaon mein inko le jao and these guys took these artillery shells and they dug them in the ground that's all so what i'm trying to tell you the tikriti network came together cell phone network came together and the explosive shells came together three networks that were disconnected came together and they literally obliterated the superpower in iraq so the game is about bringing unconnected networks together now what is the biggest problem in india our biggest networks are not connected at all so you guys are a tiny network you're 1% of the country a small network you're not connected to anything else i mean if you really want to bring india's power to bear then you have to think about these things networks are energy right the moment you bring them together it doesn't become 1 plus 1 plus 1 it becomes exponential bram it just goes if you use that framework you can see that that's a very powerful framework in politics it's a very powerful framework in business samajwadi party network joined with congress network earlier that network was like this now the network is suddenly lined up together now the problem is in india is that pretty much all the conversations that we are having of development etc etc exclude 90% of our population meaning the really powerful network is sitting outside so what is the role of technology in it 
is to apply your understanding and knowledge on those networks. But right now what the game is taking place is you're in 1% or not able to apply the stuff in the large 90% of, of India. And then these, these networks are not only physical networks, right? So there are caste networks in India. There are business networks in India. There are agricultural networks in India. So that to me is an interesting way to think about it.